Okay, so we are back on the cottage extension Friday morning. Just finished that job. I'm going to get everywhere up to 200 today or just uh, all the block work up to nine. So I'm ready for lintels. So I'm just gonna get this in here. All the blocks, even though they were covered last night, were wet through. So I've loaded them out like this to aerate them. So yes, you can hear it's dead windy. So all the air is gonna flow through these blocks and hopefully dry it out. So all I've got to do is lay these and then probably just load out the front with the concretes. Nice steady Friday. I was having a little look at the drawing last night and I've got a little little nib here. And that's because I've got a steel going here all the way over there. So I've thrown ties out just to build a block, like a, a four inch block pillar all the way up. But I was thinking last night, it's probably not the strongest it could be. So what I'm gonna do, I've just taken a block out there and then I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna tooth it in, block flat, every other course now. And I reckon that'll be much stronger, especially cause it's uh, old in a roof. So I'm gonna crack on with this and then get all this plastered in, sand. Oh, got sausages today, boys. <laughs> Just finished this pillar here. As you can see, it's all built in now. Um, you know, that doesn't really matter. I've got ties out, so, you know, at least it's toothed in up there, block flat. I only really thought about doing it because I knew we had a steel going here, but then I saw a video, what Steve and Alex did, building a block garage or a summer house, I think it was. And they incorporated a block pillar in their block work as well. And I just thought that is dead strong. That's never going to move. And because obviously it's holding a steel, that is going to be much stronger than if it was just like that all the way up, which is what you normally see on site in garages. Um, anyway, this is all good. I've put a couple of profiles, one there and one on the back side, just to hold that steady. And just to show you, how well my blocks are dry now it has been drizzling but these are almost bone dry now so little tip for you lads if you're on site and you've got a load of block work to do monday and you got to load out for friday like on friday aerate your blocks like this and your bricks they will dry out rapid and then you're good to go especially now it's come to winter so yeah you can have that one for free anyway let's crack on get that done Oh my 
Okay, so we are to height now. That's all ready for lintels. Even though that clip was time-lapsed, you could see me using my block splitter quite a lot for all my cuts. I've used the block splitter for this entire job. Um, a lot of people have said, oh, dickhead, using a block splitter, trying to be like Charlie, or you're not ass bashing, you don't need one of them. I think it's really important to utilize tools like a block splitter for the simple reason, as a bricklayer, we all knacker our ears up from using steel source, knacker our lungs up, you're wrecking your back and things like that. So not F1 can be bothered to put earmuffs on and a mask on every time they pick a grinder up or a steel saw up. I know I don't and I can guarantee 99% of the lads don't either. So using a block splitter, even though it is heavy to move about, it is really good. It's really good. It's there's no mess no dust nice and quiet you know it's it's a really good tool so i would highly recommend getting one there are jobs what you can only do with a steel saw you know like my vertical damp and then if you do have to use a steel saw get a proper good mask like this um i think that's like the best one pretty much you can get from any tool shop so yeah just my little bit of advice because we knacker our bodies up in this game. So let's try and look after them a bit. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> Something I spoke about yesterday, I didn't really explain myself very well. And I was talking about trying to reduce the movement it takes to lay a block and trying to save my back a bit. Um, and you couldn't really see it in the clip just because how the, uh, my camera was. Um, but something I'm trying to do, and something that I noticed from watching uh, my other videos, is I would get a block, I would pick it up, and then I would proceed to perk it, and then lay it. Or I would go to the stack of blocks and then pick it up and mess about with it, perk it. And I was just thinking, all that is just extra strain on the back, which I'm having problems with at the moment. And then I saw someone in, on Instagram, and they perked a block like that. And I thought, oh, that looks good. That looks easy. Um, and I guess I've just been trying to do that a bit more. Or try not to pick a block up for a pointless reason, just picking it up to lay it. So whether the block's this way, it's been laid there, for instance. Oh, straighten it. This is an example. Um, and then putting the perk on that way, which again, saves your back. Um, yeah, just trying to reduce my movements in what it takes to lay a block. Uh, yeah.
there we go so we are pretty much done for today just gonna be waiting for the plinth bricks but uh, yeah everything's pretty good let's have a little look down there oh dear yeah got f -ware up to nine ready for lintels uh, FWS pointed inside and outside. I tell you what, I don't know how you lads on site make really decent money when you've got to point the back of your block work. So it takes ages. Anyway, I've just had a quick load out and all good to go. Hopefully, I'll be back here Tuesday if the plimps come Monday. So I'm off to the pub again. Sad. Enjoy your weekend, lads. Take care, see you in the next one.